Odyssey, an excerpt from a Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. X had marked time in the limestone ledge since the Paleozoic seas covered the land. Time to an atom locked in a rock does not pass. The break came when a bur oak root nosed down a crack and began prying and sucking. In the flash of a century, the rock decayed, and X was pulled out and up into the world of living things. He helped build a flower, which became an acorn, which fattened a deer, which fed an Indian, all in a single year. From his birth in the Indian's bones, X joined again in chase and flight, feast and famine, hope and fear. He felt these things as changes in the little chemical pushes and pulls that tugged timelessly at every atom. When the Indian took his leave of the prairie, X moldered briefly underground only to embark on a second trip through the bloodstream of the land. This time, it was a rootlet of blue stem that sucked him up and lodged him in a leaf that rode the green billows of the prairie June, sharing the common task of hoarding sunlight. To this leaf also fell an uncommon task, flicking shadows across a plover's eggs. The ecstatic plover hovering overhead poured praises on something perfect, Perhaps the eggs, perhaps the shadows, or perhaps the haze of pink flocks that lay on the prairie. When the departing plovers set wing for the Argentine, all the blue stems waved farewell with tall, new tassels. When the first geese came out of the north and all the blue stems glowed wine red, a four-handed deer mouse cut the leaf in which X lay and buried it in an underground nest, as if to hide a bit of Indian summer from the thieving frosts. But a fox detained the mouse. Molds and fungi took the nest apart, and X lay in the soil again, footloose and fancy free. Next, he entered a tuft of side oats grandma, a buffalo, a buffalo chip, and again the soil. Next, a spider wort, a rabbit, and an owl, thence a tuft of sporobolus. All routines come to an end. This one ended with a prairie fire, which reduced the prairie plants to smoke, gas, and ashes. Phosphorus and potash atoms stayed in the ash, but the nitrogen atoms were gone with the wind. A spectator might, at this point, have predicted an early end to the biotic drama for with fires exhausting the nitrogen, the soil might well have lost its plants and blown away. But the prairie has two strings to its bow. Fires thin its grasses, but they thicken the stand of leguminous herbs. Prairie clover, bush clover, wild bean, vetch, lead plant, trefoil, and baptisia each carrying its own bacteria housed in nodules on its rootlets. Each nodule pumped nitrogen out of the air into the plant, and then ultimately into the soil. Thus, the Prairie Savings Bank took in more nitrogen from its legumes than it paid out in its fires. That the prairie is rich is known to the humblest deer mouse. Why the prairie is rich is a question seldom asked in all the still lapse of ages. Between each of his excursions through the biota, X lay in the soil and was carried by the rains, inch by inch, downhill. Living plants retarded the wash by impounding atoms, dead plants by locking them to their decayed tissues. Animals ate the plants and carried them briefly uphill or downhill depending on whether they died or defecated higher or lower than they fed. No animal was aware that the altitude of his death was more important than his manner of dying. Thus, 
A fox caught a gopher in a meadow, carrying X uphill to his bed on the brow of a ledge, where an eagle laid him low. The dying fox sensed the end of his chapter in foxdom, but not the new beginning in the odyssey of an atom. An Indian eventually inherited the eagle's plumes and with them propitiated the fates, whom he assumed had a special interest in Indians. It did not occur to him that they might be busy casting dice against gravity, that mice and men, soils and songs might be merely ways to retard the march of atoms to the sea. One year, while X lay in a cottonwood by the river, he was eaten by a beaver, an animal that always feeds higher than it dies. The beaver starved when his pond dried up during a bitter frost. X rode the carcass down the spring freshet, losing more altitude each hour than heretofore in a century. He ended up in the silt of a backwater bayou where he fed a crayfish, a coon, and then an Indian who laid him down to his last sleep in a mound on the riverbank. One spring, the ox bow carved the bank, and after one short week of freshet, X lay again in his ancient prison, the sea. An atom at large in the biota is too free to know freedom. An atom back in the sea has forgotten it. For every atom lost to the sea, the prairie pulls another out of the decaying rocks. The only certain truth is that its creatures must suck hard, live fast, and die often, lest its losses exceed its gains.